Well, it's all about the honours today, and there were, in my view, some well-deserved. You had Dame Shirley Bassey, who becomes a companion of the order. She's now the 64th living member of the order. The brilliant Gilly Cooper, I love her. She becomes a dame for her services to literature and charity. I can remember being addicted to her books at school. Sir Ridley Scott becomes a Knight Grand Cross. And Mary Earps, who's cleaning up this year, she also gets an honour. But much of the awards appear to be rewards for failure. Because on the list, the ex-passport office boss, Abby Tierney, who carried on working partly from home despite a 700,000 processing backlog, she's been given a companion of the Order of the Bath, the second highest honour to a damehood. She was recognised for public service despite presiding over failure, which meant that thousands had holiday plans ruined. She was also responsible for processing asylum applications, which at the time had an over 100,000 backlog. And, of course, she was in charge of stopping the boats. Well, well, well that's gone well. She admitted to a Commons committee that 96% of asylum applications from arrivals in 2021 were still awaiting a decision. Congratulations to her. Can I be on the list? Those giving out honours include Liz Truss, who was defenestrated by her party within 49 days. I mean, there are a lot of people arguing whether she should be giving anything out. She originally had 14 people on her list, which basically works out an honour for every three and a half days of her premiership. But only 11 were accepted. Some argue that Tony Blair and Gordon Brown did not have a resignation to honours list, so why should she? They served for considerably longer, but then, in Tony Blair's case, he had only just got over the cash for honours, so it probably wouldn't have been a good look. The way I see it is Liz Truss was extracted from her party in a very unsavoury manner. She was humiliated because they wanted Sunak. She was blamed for the market crash and the subsequent mortgage increases. The latter, any good economist would have told you, needed to happen anyway. And her policies, whilst they may have been presented in an incorrect manner, are now being pursued by her party. Many who argue that she was actually right. Even her focus on charcoal was being adopted by Labour. Liz gave out honours to her loyalists like Matthew Elliott, the former chief executive for Vote Leave, Alex, Alec Shelbrook MP, who was knighted. He served as her junior defence minister and her close friend Jackie Doyle Prince, uh, the MP for Thurrock, also got an honour. On recommendation to the king by Rishi Sajid Javid, will be knighted. Why? <laughs> On the revolving carousel of jobs, he held six cabinet roles and some would argue was the linchpin because as soon as he resigned under the Boris leadership, Rishi followed and the whole thing fell apart. Then, on Labour's side, Margaret Beckett, Dame Margaret Beckett, becomes a Dame Grand Cross, whatever that means, after serving 40 years. But she was the one that nominated Jeremy Corbyn as party leader, which even she describes as the worst mistake of her life. We forgive her, but as a result, Boris Johnson got an 80-seat majority. Why give her another honour? And outside politics, Aviva boss Amanda Blank for her services to business, gender, equality and net zero. She ensures that shortlists aren't full of white men. Great work if you can get it. But what happened to the meritocracy and what exactly does she do for the net zero bit? What a joke! Look, if they want to carry on with these honours, which I think on balance are a great thing, but if they want it to, to carry on or have some sort of credibility, I think it needs a reboot because many on the list are being rewarded for their abject failure.